thank you for having me. And actually, thank you for, for the switch of presentations, because I think Taco has given me the perfect introduction. <laughs> um, and I'll not present anything about models, but I want to present a couple of tools that are useful specifically when you want to connect different models and you want to bring different approaches, different domains together. Uh, my presentation is coming out of some work we're doing in the Horizon 2020 Open Entrance project. And just to give you some overview, there are currently three, op uh, three Horizon 2020 projects that are related to modeling in support of the transition to a low carbon energy system in Europe. These are the three I know. There are probably others, and I apologize for anything that, any project that I have not mentioned. There is Open Entrance, uh, which is us. There is Sentinel. Um, led by ETH uh, in, in Zurich, and there's the spine model uh, led by the VTT uh, group in, in Finland. Um, and then also what has to be mentioned in this context is the open energy platform, which is developed or led, the development is led by the Rainer Lehmann Institute and other teams in Berlin. Uh, and what all of these teams want to do is provide some framework for bringing together models effectively. So similar to what Taco has uh, just talked about. And what you need to do in order to actually combine models is develop a common nomenclature. So you need a way to describe the data that you're actually looking at in a way that everybody agrees upon. And the key part of my presentation, I wanna uh, give you some idea of how we are planning this. And before I jump into what we are doing, I wanna, uh, briefly say what are the dimensions that you need to identify when you want to exchange different uh, data between different models. First, you need a model and a scenario identifier. That is usually straightforward. You need to agree on some region mappings or region disaggregation levels, which can be countries, which can be continents, which can be the nuts or some nuts level. You need to agree on some time dimension. These are the things that are relatively straightforward. What is more difficult is then describing the actual data. And there, there are two concepts. Either you say, if I talk about primary energy, then I have 10 dimensions. But if I talk about final demand, then I have 12 dimensions. So the, the data tables, if you want to look at it as a, as a table, changes dimensionality as you move to different variables or different data types. Or what you can do is you can con concatenate all the relevant dimensions into one variable string. And this is what we are commonly doing. So you have something like this primary energy as a super category. Below that, you have coal. And below that, you have with CCS. So you have some hierarchical structure. Um, and all the relevant information of what kind of data you're looking at is actually condensed into this one string. Uh, now that sounds really complicated, and now I want to show you briefly how we're trying to uncomplicate this. Um, the idea is to develop a common nomenclature in a way that is in, a, in an infrastructure that is intuitive and versatile. And there is a trade-off. You can have something that's very complex and difficult to read, or you can have something that's very easy to understand, but then not usable in automated workflows. So you can write a 50 page Word document describing everything, but you can't use it in a workflow or you do something ex extremely database focused uh, and then nobody can follow. Uh, oh, nobody can understand that. But we try to do a, um, uh, well, a compromise between these two so that anybody who wants to know, well, how did they look at water requirements for a particular sector, they can go to this GitHub repository and within five minutes, they should find the answer, oh, in open entrance, they named it like that. And you don't need half an hour or one hour to find that information, but you find something within a reasonable couple of minutes. You, you can then still say, oh, that's stupid, I'm not gonna use that, but at least there you get some idea relatively quickly. And then we also wanna bring in some additional uh, useful uh, tools related to this repository. For example, ISO 2 to country name mappings. So there are some code snippets that you can use to easily get these kind of things. And then also other things that you waste always a couple of minutes on, not things that are super complex, but th 
things that are annoying and prone to error. For example, the EU uses ISO 2 codes, except for UK and Greece, where they use other codes for no apparent reason. And we have developed an infrastructure that already accounts for that automatically. And no matter what, whether you use the proper ISO 2 codes or you use the EU ISO 2 codes, it will just work and hopefully save a lot of you a couple of minutes uh, when converting data, compiling your inputs, or analyzing your results. You're at five minutes, Daniel. OK. Um, that was the main part of my presentation. And I want to run through three other quick, quick uh, projects that might be helpful for you. One is we have developed an open source package for streamlined, for streamlined workflows. Um, so uh, for analysis and validation of your results, for categorization, for some statistics. Uh, if you like working with Python, if you like working with Pandas data frames, but want to have something that's slightly more specific for energy, have a look. Um, second thing, converting units. Again, it's something, it's not difficult. It's not rocket science, but you waste a couple of minutes trying to figure this out. There is a really cool Python package called Pint that makes it easy, but it doesn't have all the units that you might need in energy systems modeling. So we made an extension of that Pine package called IAM units, which has, for example, ton of coal equivalent, which is something that you very often need. So if you Six use- Six minutes. Okay, uh, shut up. Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, not shut up to you. Sorry, I didn't want to be rude. Shut up to myself. Uh, uh, last slide, um, <clears throat> we had some discussions in Open Entrance about how to be open and fair and a lot of people know what it is in principle, but don't want to read the 50 page document. So we put everything that's important on a slide. That slide is here, end of my talk. Thank you. Perfect, good timing. All right, great. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, how are we asking questions? I'm just going to unmute and start talking. Uh, Daniel, there's an open energy ontology um, also being developed in parallel um, to your um, nomenclature. Do you want to make a comment about the inter interrelation there? Uh, yes, and I, the, open en uh, the open ontology is actually part of the open energy platform that I mentioned in the beginning. And I'm in awe of what this is trying to do. I just tried to get into it a couple of times and I never managed to actually find some information that I could use. So it's this super complex project that tries to answer all the questions. And this is why I think our approach is complementary to what they are doing. They have the answer to everything. We have a decent answer, not the best one, but we have a decent answer that you can find in five minutes. And then hopefully over time, we can bring these two closer together. Okay, it looks like Tom Brown has some questions. You wanna go, Tom? Hi, Daniel. Thanks for the really nice talk and for all those extra projects that look super interesting. Um, I have a whole load of questions, but maybe one simple one is, is, are you doing this for input data or output data? What exactly is the thing that you are uh, trying to kind of categorize here? Um, the thing that you realize when you're talking about model integration is there, there is no difference. Uh, what is the output of one model is the input to another model. So everything that we did in this nomenclature describes something that can be either an input or an output, depending on which model is producing or using it. Okay. Great. My, my second question, that, is it okay if I ask a second one, Destiny? Or Yes, we have one minute left. <laughs> um, like data documentation is also super important. Like we saw in this like PV discussion costs that what some people define as a cost, it means like 10 different things. Is it utility? Is it rooftop? Is it including the grid connection costs or soft costs? Um, isn't that also important? And how do you deal with that? Uh, that's a really good question. Go to our GitHub repository and start an issue, please. Uh, I, I guess that the answer is we would somehow manage, uh, try to package it into the, uh, this nomenclature by making subspecifications. So have cost of PV, including grid connection. So going down this hierarchy tree uh, and the 
data format we use for writing that is YAML files. So it's really easy to add more attributes. So the, the variable that you say might be uh, investment cost PV with grid connection. But then you can make descriptions as additional attributes in the YAML file where you actually say, uh, how do you define grid connection? Is it only to the next substation or is it including costs for strengthening the connection from the substation to the major grid? Um, okay, so the so idea sorry, is I have to cut you off. Sorry. 